It was several years ago that while looking through the internet, especially on YouTube, that I found this video. Well, it was a, I believe like a five or six part series. It was a UPC symposium where they featured the research of William Chalfant. And I thought it was very interesting, but I was not pleased with what I heard when they referenced the research of Brother Chalfant. Now, I don't know this brother at all, and I don't know what came of him and, and how he was affected by the comments made on his research. But I know one thing that if it had been me, I would have been very upset for them to be laughing at hours and hours of research. And that is why I decided to do this video, because uh, I believe that the United Pentecostal Church, they dropped the ball. I believe that they messed up big time with the information that was given to them. Instead of them taking this information and looking at the very important parts, they totally just got rid of the information and wanted to start something else. And you don't do that with uh, the wonderful research that this brother did. Above all, he said some things that I want to comment on. Thank you very much, our brother. If you enjoyed that, say amen. I always wondered where that doctrine came from. Now I'm going to get my dictionary and find out. The author did establish that there were ancient pagan trinities in India, India, Mesopotamia, Japan, Egypt, and Babylon. However, to my understanding, he did not conclusively verify that they all came from Babylon any more than if I had a horse and you had a horse, it would mean we both got them from the same place. In his discussion of the Platonic and Neoplatonic philosophers, uh, Chalfan has emphasized that a triad was a feature of their teaching which is a commonly known and accepted fact. It is easy to accept the idea that theologians who had been schooled in Greek philosophy carried over their ideas in attempting to explain the Godhead. While I hard, wholeheartedly conclude with the author's premise that the history of divine triads is not derived from the Old Testament, there is a school of study that says that there were polytheistic tendencies among the Hebrews until a later Old Testament period with the Jehovah as the chief among the gods. While, of course, I do not believe this, the author has done nothing to establish his contention uh, from biblical sources regarding the Hebrews with either biblical or extra biblical references. This paper is filled with a multitude of proof texts that are interesting and helpful in the study of oneness. Can you say amen? Yes. And like Brother Tenney, we're all going to go home and just investigate all of these references. In evaluating this paper, I asked for and received helpful comments from Dr. Craig Shaw, who is a graduate of the Louisville Theological Seminary, Baptist Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky. I feel that his comments would be helpful at this point, especially in view of the fact that when I brought the paper to him, he said, the first thing I want to tell you is, I am not a Trinitarian. I am not a classical Trinitarian. And I understand he has studied under a man in Louisville Theological Seminary, Dr. Frank Stagg, who is himself a non-Trinitarian, and who has said, that uh, there are basic non-negotiables in biblical perspective. These non-negotiables include the oneness of God, His continuing presence in the world He has made, and the divine human nature of Jesus Christ. Dr. Shaw has said the following, and uh, this is Dr. Shaw. The paper appears as a deluge of information, a lot of which is good, 
but it does not follow any logical presentation. Rather, the data appear as a stacking of arguments which, when weighted together, proves the force of the argument. Such a methodology places extreme confidences in secondary sources. I'm quoting Dr. Shaw. He continues, I would have been much more impressed had the author taken one strain of philosophical thought and followed it. His method is akin to a biblical proof text method which does not belie a good understanding of the context of the argument. One cannot, for example, put the Trinitarian view of the West and the Alexandrian schools into one lump and suggest that they are all basically the same. He says, The writer does present two interesting ideas which could stand much more research and investigation. The impact of Logos Christology on Trinitarian formulations and the nature of triads in ancient culture. I suspect the latter is prominent, although not as prominent as Chalfant suggests, and I suspect the former is not as important as he suggests. Interestingly enough, he says, early Catholicism followed Paul and the Synoptics and not the Joannine community, which was the heartthrob of the Gnostics. In regard to the conclusion, Dr. Schull says, since the author has not really presented a logical case out of which he can draw conclusions, the paper really does not have a concluding section. The generalization that he makes based upon weighted evidence is just like the evidence general. On his research of the origin of the Trinity doctrine, William Chalfant starts with uh, in part one where he talks about the many pagan trinities that existed from the very beginning of time starting with Babylon, Mesopotamia, Egypt and so forth. Uh, the criticism says that he did not establish all these trinities as coming from Babylon but he mentions a very important book The Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop and this man does prove his point. He proves clearly that all the trinities started with the trinity of Babylon. And he traces them in his book where there is a father, a mother, and a son. One of the things that I really enjoyed about uh, William Chalfant's research is that he mentions Philo of Alexandria. He mentions that the, the Philonic Logos became the jo Johannan, Johannan Logos or the Logos of the Apostle John. He also mentions that Gnosticism is the breeding ground for Trinitarianism and that is 100% correct. He also mentions that Alexandria is the site where the Trinity doctrine was transplanted into Christianity. And I again agree with this 100% because it was Father of Alexandria who came up with the philosophical and allegorical trinity. And he was a native of Alexandria. And I like it that he talks about the twofold stage theory of Philo and he talks about the platonic triad of Philo of Alexandria. So all these things I'm very well pleased to, to, to hear him say these things. And it's so sad that they missed it. The, the, the people who were reviewing his research did not catch on to this valuable information. They didn't catch on to the importance of it. I wrote Philo's Trinity and I prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that Philo gave us a Trinity by using allegorical applications of the scriptures. But of course, he started out with a mystical experience where he heard a voice tell him that God was never alone, that with God there was two supreme and primary powers. These powers developed into God, Word, and Wisdom, which Philo called them the three persons, the, and, and the, the triad, uh, the Platonic triad. And, and so, you know, Shelfon was very close to the truth. He was right there, but unfortunately, they didn't continue researching on this point, but they, they followed the advice 
of a Baptist preacher who claimed to be a non-Trinitarian. But all his comments tell me that he does believe in some form of a trinity. And uh, that, that they said that uh, Chalfant, you know, treated his research with a broad scope of the subject. Uh, it's very hard to teach a, a, the origin of the Trinity by using just one uh, uh, point or whatever. You have to really go through the, all the history. And it is a lot because it starts in the first century with Philo and then in the second century with the Apostolic and Antinicene Fathers who grab the teachings uh, of Philo and they incorporate them. And they, they, they take the Logos of Philo, which was a very important point, and this developed into what the, the, the Christology, it, it develops clearly in, in, into the, the Logos Christology. And that's the direct connection between Philo's, Philo, uh, Philo's Logos and the Apostolic and Antinacian Fathers. And no, they did not, the, the Apostolic Antinacian Fathers, they didn't follow the theology of Paul first. That is not true. But they did look at verses that Philo used, and they used them also. Example, Genesis 126. And, and they used other ones. And, and then uh, Theophilus of Antioch even used John 1.1. 1, 1. And all of these uh, fathers, they started using the scriptures and applying Philo's Logos to the Logos of the Bible, the Word of God. And this is how they came up with a second God. And this second God, later on, they develop into a third God with the Holy Spirit. All of this can be found in, in the writings of Philo of Alexandria. They can be found in the Apostolic and Antinacian Fathers' writings. And I wrote my book, Philo's Trinity, to prove this very point. And uh, I, I just, um, I'm saddened by the, the truth that the UPC, being a oneness uh, apostolic movement, they missed it entirely. And to this very day, if you consult uh, their writings, they don't know the true origin of the Trinity doctrine. Some, some of their best theologians will come up with Tertullian. Tertullian was in the third century. So he definitely was not the one that came up with the Trinity. And, and so this is what has happened through the years. The UPC lost out. If they would have focused on the research of, of William Shelfand and, and, and heard what he said about the, the Alexandrian culture and that he believed that from Alexandria, the Trinity came into the church. They would have, if they would have focused on that, they would have had the truth. But now you have me explaining this and commenting because the truth is that Philo of Alexandria was the first one to give us the Trinity. And this uh, philosophical allegorical application was taken up by the Apostolic and Antinacian Fathers and they developed the Trinity that became the Christian doctrine of the Trinity.